Okay, so this is my review for episode 7 of Marvel What If? Party Boy Thor. So, the premise is, what if Thor is an only child? He doesn't have a stepbrother in his side. So, what would be he grew up to be like? Well, he grew up to be a more immature version of himself. To be honest, Thor 1 at the beginning, Thor was already immature. He was attacking frost giants under his father's nose in the, one of that movie. And he only matured when he became worthy again to wield Mjolnir. So without Loki by his side, he went from immature to extremely more immature. If that makes kind of sense. So without Loki, we see Odin go to sleep. And he went into a party spree, which kinda questions a lot of progress in the Marvel timeline. So, one thing to note here is, when Thor is partying with the Warriors 3 and Sif, people from all around the galaxy went to Earth to party with him. And along those people are Howard the Duck, which is in the Collector's Vault. So how did he get out? Jeff Goldblum is there. How the hell did he get in? The scrolls are there. I thought they were hiding. I know there are, there are scrolls in Earth, but at this time, I have no idea. I have absolutely no clue how the scrolls have been involved here in this party. I believe in the end of Captain Marvel, maybe these are the skull refuge, or maybe it's some kind of separate scroll thing i don't know so a lot of this confuses me even the guardians of the galaxy and nebula are here except for thanos so speaking of thanos we'll get to him later thor had had met jane foster here again voiced by natalie portman chris hemsworth returned to voice Thor here by the way so, and Darcy, the girl from WandaVision, you know, the Cat Dennings, she married the Hover the Duck for some reason. Yeah, this episode went batshit crazy on the party stuff. So the party got so bad that S.H.I.E.L.D. worried themselves. This party caused S.H.I.E.L.D. to call out Captain Marvel. So we got a Captain Marvel vs. Thor fight scenario here. Thor eventually getting the upper hand by putting down Mjolnir on Captain Marvel. So non-stop partying, that's initially, that's really the plot here. Captain Marvel was the party pooper. Thor wants to party. Thor stops the party pooper. Party, party continues until Jane Foster, who... Kinda is into Thor again here. Called that called his mom through the Vipros for some reason. Radio frequency shit that got Heimdall's attention for for something. I don't know. Jane Foster is an astrophysicist. Maybe she figured out how to do that. Well anyway, Jane went to Asgard. Jane went to Asgard and some she told that Thor is doing some trouble things. Frigga, Thor's mom, went in to check on Thor and yeah. Thor's uh, party boy Thor is in big trouble now. Oh boy, what the hell is he gonna do? So he tried to stop the party and wants the party people to help him defend that because the excuse that Thor gave is he was doing a research on Earth or something. So, yeah. But the party goers won't listen. So, Thor had to be mature for once. Went out to the lightning. Shout to get the party goers' attention. They help him. They set up this. They fix Stonehenge, the needle. Every the Mount Rushmore, everything, and when Frigga arrived, 
she just saw Thor doing classes with the party people. So it kind of masked him. Except the part where Mjolnir is make over. How is the Bifrost Friga has that slow? I thought Bifrost was instantaneous travel. Hulk traveled fast without the without the Bifrost device. So why is Friga? Why did Friga travel so slow that Thor and company had time to clean up their mess on Earth and set up classroom in Italy? There's so many incorrect stuff here. I think the producers just went all out crazy, ignoring everything in the timeline. The Guardians are there, but they are not Guardians. Rocket is even there. Even Valkyrie is there. And Valkyrie is a, is a slave trader in Jeff Goblin's planet. I don't know. This thing is crazy. Eh? So, Thor was off the hook. And, yeah. And, oh yeah, Infinity Ultron came in possibly setting up the f episode season finale of What If. Another thing to gripe here is, the episode is, What If Thor is an only child? So, Loki became, what happened to Loki? Loki was given back to Luffy, the frost giant. But, the point is, Luffy threw away Loki. He doesn't want Loki, so... If Odin gave Loki back to Luffy, why would Luffy accept Loki back? Again, another error. Yeah, the premise of Party Boy Thor is very generic. They just went batshit. I think this isn't one of those epic episodes that you would expect any storytelling, except for the end where Infinity Ultron came out with Vision's head inside his chassis. Another thing with Thor and Loki not being brothers is that they're more closer as brothers from another mother than being adoptive siblings. And it kind of defeats the purpose that Loki and Thor are friends and brothers from another mother if your premise is Loki being an only child. You know, you get that? Okay. So... 5 out of 10 for this episode, it was bad shit. Thank you. At least this star has more personality than Thor 1 and Thor 2. So, end the video.